Okay, so let's finish up the for the year, the last year for the year. We're going to do something called the vector product. And what we're going to do is we're going to take two vectors and we're going to do something called crossing it, and that results in a third vector. So once again, with the scalar, the dot product, we took two vectors and created a, a, a scalar number. In this case, we're taking two vectors, we're going to cross it, and we're going to come up with a new vector. Now, the geometric thing, this is kind of cool, we're, A and B are, A and B are not parallel to each other. They're not the same vector. Um, and the idea is you have two vectors, uh, let's see, A and B, and it turns out this is kind of cool. So once again, A is not parallel to the B. They're not the same. So we have two vectors. What's cool is that the cross product is going to look something like this. And it turns out that it's actually perpendicular to both, both vectors. This is kind of cool. So A cross B is perpendicular to A, and A cross B is perpendicular to B. Now, this is only possible in three space. Um, we can't use it in two space. Um, not possible uh, in two space. And once again, the condition is that A is not parallel to B. They're not the same vectors. They're they're intersecting vectors. You know, so we have A and B. And the idea is, can we find a third vector that is perpendicular to both of them? You know, you might say, okay, well, well, is this possible? Is it possible? And you go, no, that's not possible because a triangle can't have two right angles. So we can't do it in two space, but we can do it in three space. And this is a very important. Physics love this stuff. So the question is, um, mathematically, mathematically, how are we going to find this? And uh, we're going to use something called a matrix. Uh, a matrix is a collection of numbers arranged into a fixed number of rows and columns, and we kind of did that. A little later, I'm going to show you how to do it in GeoGebra and do it in the graphing calculator. But for now, um, we're going to talk about, we're going to do it by hand. And once again, in the video, um, in my video, we're going to have, I'm going to show you how to do it on the calculator. So. First of all, what is a matrix? So we have a definition here. So for example, you know, here's the matrix right here. One, two, three, three, negative two, five. Um, and it turns out, whoops, sorry. So we have, this is a three by two matrix. There's three rows. No, sorry. Sorry, rows, I apologize, rows and columns. So here's row one, here's row two. Column one, column two, column three. So this is a two by three. Yeah, Sam, you're saying, wait a minute, this kind of looks like Gaussian elimination. Yeah, I'm gonna show you some really nifty tricks. Um, how this is two by three. How about this one? This vector of one, two, three, five. This is a four by one. And this kind of remind, should remind us of the vectors that we made in the last video when we were doing the, the dot product and finding the, the angle between the vectors. So this is a matrix. Um, uh, this is a matrix. Um, how about this matrix right here? We can do five, two, one, one. This is a two by two. And let's take a look at this matrix right here. One, zero, 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 one, zero. Uh, zero, zero, 001 and this is a 3 by 3 matrix and these matrices are known as square matrices these are known as square matrices because they're n by n um, they're n by n and, and this is what we're in. we're interested in this unit in uh, n by n 2 by 2s and 3 by c's so the next thing we want to talk about is something called the determinants. The determinant of an n by n matrix. And so the idea is a scale. We're going to do. We're going to manipulate the numbers, and we're going to come up with the numbers. So it's a scalar value. It's a scalar value. Um, calculated, 
calculated uh, from the entries. Um, in a square matrix. So you can only find you can only find the determinant. You can only find the determinant. Sorry, let me get a better erase to erase my board. You can only find a, the determinant of a square matrix. So let me erase the board. Let's see. If we let matrix A equal A, B, C, D, then the determinant of A, which is written as like the square of uh, like the absolute value, it's not absolute value, but that's how they write it. It's equal to A times B minus B times C. Da, da, like the cross product. So, for example, if we let B equal square matrix one, two, three, four, then we say the determinant of B, which we would write as one, two, three, four, inside like what looks like absolute value brackets, not absolute value. We have one times four minus two times three, which is negative two. The determinant is negative two. Let's try another one. C. Uh, how about a five, zero, six, one? Five, zero, six, one. We have the determinant of C. You know, five, zero, six, one. And we have five times one minus six times zero, which is five. Last example for the two by twos. Let's do, uh, let's a D equal one, two, one, two, three, six. Now I, now I, I want you to say, oh, you know what? We studied that issue that when the, when the rows are multiples of each other, uh, that showed up, we've discussed this, and we're, we're gonna tie it in together. So the determinant of D is, maybe I want to write it over again. So I know it's six minus six, or zero. Hmm, kind of interesting, right? Let's move on. So the question is, the question is, can we do, find the determinant of a three by three, and yeah, we're gonna to need to find the determinant of a three by three. So, let's see. Let's get this out of here. How are we gonna find the determinant of three by three? Well, it's a little cumbersome. Um, once again, I'm gonna show you how to do it in, uh, I put like two videos in the video, but we're gonna do it by hand, because it might show up in part one, but then you, uh, you, you will see how to do it in part two. Let's take, let's see. Okay, so let's take a look at our first factor. Let's take a look at our first factor. So we have, Let's call it F, and it's, let's see, 2, 3, 5, 5, 6, 4. Let's make this a 1 to make our lives a little easier. And negative 2, 1, 7. Okay, so the question is how do we find the determinant? How do we find the determinant of F? So, first of all, Watch carefully. First thing you're gonna do, so I'm gonna show you the old school way. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put a minus and then a plus here. Good. Next, circle the two and eliminate the row and the column. And so you have two times the determinant of six, four, one, seven. Nice. Next, you're gonna take your minus three, circle it, and eliminate that row and column, and you're left with the, with the determinant of one, four, negative two, seven. Finally, what you're gonna do is circle the, uh, the plus, the five, so you have plus five, circle the five, get rid of its column and row, and you're left with one, six, negative two, one. You're gonna multiply these, these the numbers in the first row, with the determinants left over, and that's going to give you a determinant of a three by three matrix. So we have two times 42 minus four, minus three times seven minus negative eight, plus five times one minus negative 12. We have, this is 42 minus four is 38, times two is 76. 
we have three time three subtractive when I said I get eight is forty-five, so it's minus forty-five. And we have plus five times thirteen is sixty-five. So this is 140 minus 45, which gives us 95. No, I've made a mistake somewhere. Yeah, that's right. 45, 65, negative 20, no. No, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, 96, sorry about that. Okay, let's go to page three. Let's try another one over here, because we don't need so much space. Let's see. Um, we have three, seven, five, two, eight, Negative three, one, one, one. <coughs> Excuse me. First, let's get the minus plus in there. Next, check out the three times, let's see. Eight, negative three, one, one. My green pen. Minus seven. Take out the, the row in the column. <coughs> Two, negative three, one, one. Got the plus in there. Plus my five. Um, take the column, row out, and left with Two, eight, one, one. Two, eight, one, one. Nice. <coughs> Let's see, what do we have here? We have three times eight minus negative three, 11. Minus seven times two minus negative three, five, plus five times two minus eight, negative six, oh, negative six. So we have 33 minus 35 minus 30. So that this is negative two, negative 32. Now, now there's another method to, to there's another method you can use to solve this. It's a little old, it's the way I was taught. Um, here's the trick. Ready? You're going to rewrite. So we're going to write seven, 3, 7, 5, 2, 8, negative 3, 1, 1, 1. And you're going to copy over the first two columns. 3, 2, 1, 7, 8, 1. Then what you're going to do is you're going to draw three lines to the southeast. You're going to write la, la, la. Did everyone see that? So we have three times eight times one is 24. Plus seven times negative three times one is negative 21. And five times two times one is 10. Then... You're going to subtract. You're going to subtract the lines going to the southwest. Blah, blah, blah. Seven times two times one is 14. Three times negative three times one is negative nine. Whoops. Five times eight times one is 40. So let's figure out what we have here. We have, we have. 21, 24 minus 20 is 3. This is 13. And then we have minus four, 14 minus, minus 5 minus 45. And what do we end up with? Negative 32. It's another way to do it. It's your choice. You can just, let's use this new method. Let's see if the new method works out for this. So we have 2, 3, 5. One, six, four, negative seven, negative two, one, seven. Let's rewrite the first two columns again. Two, one, negative two, three, six, one. Let's take this new method. So let's say we're going to go to the, the, the southeast. La, la, la. So we have 
2 times 6 times 7, which is 84, plus 3 times, two, three times 4 times 92, which is negative 24, and 5 times 1 times 1 is 5. And then we're going to subtract off the journey to the southwest, minus la, la, la. So we have 21 plus 8 minus uh, 12 times 5 is 60. Let's see what we got here. 84. Let me get my black marker. Let's see. 84. 84 minus 24 is positive 60. This is 65 minus uh, 21 plus 8. So 29 minus, so 60 minus 29 is uh, four, uh, 30, 31. So it's negative 31. And so we have 96. Nice. Excellent. So you can use either method to uh, find the determinant of these matrices. Let's see, where am I? I apologize. Let's see. So. Two, three, nice. So the question is, the next thing we want to figure out is we want to bring this into the world of factors. So factors, let's say um, we have 3i minus 2j plus 4k and 5i plus j minus k. I want to know if this is a, and this is B, I want to know what is A cross B. Now, first, um, I want you to watch the video, the two videos. I want you to see the geometric and the, uh, sorry, I had to do it on the graphing calculator. Then we'll do it by hand. Okay, so here's the, here's the visual. So the first, um, we're now in GeoGebra slash 3D. You can go over here and you can find 3D calculator. That's where we are. And, uh, so let's get some vectors down. Now, the example was 3i minus 2j plus 4k. What I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to I'm going to um, I'm going to start at 0 0 0 0. I'm going to create the point um, 3 comma negative 2 whoops, negative 2 comma 4 that's point B, and then I'm going to create the, the other point, which is 5, comma, 1, kinda, comma, negative 1. So we can see here these, they're not – so we can move it around. Have fun. I, I'm, I get confused sometimes. I can't get it to move right. What we're going to do is I'm going to create vectors. So um, let's go to circle star uh, – circle triangle. Um, let's get more. Um, let's create some vectors. Scroll down, vector, underlines and point vectors. So, you, so it's good. Let me move my face out of the way because you don't want to see my face. Um, let's get rid of that X. Oh, come on. There we go. So vectors is going to ask for two points. So I'm going to start at the origin and go to B, and then I'm going to go to A and go to C. So let's go back to move, and let's just – I want you to fool around with the, the axis. I want you to see – these, these two vectors. The question is, I want to find a third vector that's actually perpendicular to these two vectors. And so uh, the, what we're going to do is the cross product. So we're going to, in GeoGebra, we're going to do CROSS, cross vector vector. We have the two vectors, U comma V. And it gives us our new vector. It, it finds it for us, negative 2, 23, 14. Let's, I'm going to move this around. And you can see that, it's kind of cool, that this new vector is actually perpendicular to the other two vectors. And, and that's what we wanted to find. If I, it has, so it, it, has, um, it has a direction perpendicular to AB and AC, but also it has a magnitude. And so, once again, we're, we'll talk about it more in the next unit. But right now, we just want to figure out how to find, how did the, you know, how did the, the technology find us, and how do we find it? So, good.
Okay, so while I'm making movies, I'm also show you um, how do we do the cross product in our graph and calculators. Well, first thing we have to do is we have to create the vectors. So once again, it was 3i minus 2j plus 4k. So let's go to menu, matrix vector. First, we have to create the vector in a matrix form. So we, it's a, we're doing, so it's three rows, one column. Okay, um, it, let's see, we have three. We have negative two and we have four. What we're going to do is we're going to store it as letter A. You can store it as any letter you want. Next, we're going to do the next vector. Let's see, menu, matrix vector, create a matrix. Um, and we want the number of rows to be three, the number of columns to be one. Okay. Uh, and it's five one and negative one and we're going to store that as b control var letter b just hit the letter b storing it and then let me get my face out of there and then we want to find the cross product and so the calculator does it for you let's do menu um, matrix vector uh let's see let's go down let's see vector cross product and then you're doing a comma b that's the how you enter the field and answer what do we got negative 2 23 13 is that we the answer we got in geogebra come on let's see oh, i guess i can't get that let's see is that the answer we got in geogebra oh sorry 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 3d 3d negative 2 23 13 negative 2, 23, 13. So that's how we figure out the cross product. And um, also while we're here, you can actually, you can figure out the, remember in the last class we did the determinant. So let's go to menu, matrix vector, create. Um, let's create a two by two. So we have like one, two, three, four. We know the answer is four minus six. Let's save that. Actually, what we can do is, well, we could save it. Okay, the first method is you can always save it. You know, let's call the C. And then what we can do is menu, matrix vector, determinant, it's there, of C. Or you, I think, I believe, I'm trying this for the first time, menu, matrix vector, determinant, and then you actually put a, a vector in. Let's see if we can put um, a matrix in there create a matrix, a two by two. Okay, let's see, one, uh, sorry, two, three, four, it does it for you. And there, and also you can put like a three by three in there. What you can't do is, uh, you can't put variables in that, you, you can't put variables, it has to be like a three by three. So if you want to find the determinant of a three by three, to determine it and then put a three by three matrix. Either you've saved it or you put it in there and it finds it for you. And actually, you could actually find the determinant, you know, for those of you who are aspiring to, you know, you know, abstract math, you could, I mean, you could theoretically create a determinant of any n by n size. Um, and, and that's basically, I'm not gonna do that here. Good, let's see, stop sharing. Okay, so how are we gonna do this by hand? Well, it's a little different. On the top, we're gonna to create a matrix, but on top, we're gonna to do I, J, K. The first row, we're gonna put our three, negative two, four, and then in the second row, um, we're gonna put five, one, negative one, and then we're just gonna do the same way, but What's different is we're going to keep the I, J, K. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our minus plus. <clears throat> and then you can choose your method. Um, I'm going to do more of a matrix. So it's I times, let's see, if I pull the I out, I have negative 2, 4, 1, negative 1. This is kind of running out. Like it, let's use this one. Uh, we have minus j, cross out the j, we have 3, 4, 
5, negative 1, and then plus k, cross out the k column, plus the k row, we left the 3, negative 2, 5, 1, 3, negative 2, 5, 1, and then we figure this out. Let's see. So we have 2 minus 4, it's negative 2i. We have minus, let's see, 3 minus 20. A negative 3 minus 20 is negative 23j. And then we have plus the k, 3 minus negative 10 gives us 13. Final answer, negative 2i plus 23j plus 13k. And you saw this in the video. This is what the calculator came up with. So this is how we do it by hand. That's how we do it. Okay, next example. Um, Let's the next next example. Let's let C equal I plus J plus K and D is equal to two I minus three J plus four K. And so I want you to find uh, the cross product of C plus D. And you can go to GeoGebra, you can like visually see what's going on here. Um, you can go to your graphing calculator and quickly come up with the answer. Let's do it right now because it might, this might be a part one question. So let's see. We have I, J, K. I have 1, 1, 1, and I have 2, negative 3, 4. Once again, put your minus and your plus in there. Minus, plus. Let's take the I first. So it's I. Well, I want to write in black pen. You might not be able to see it. So we have i times, let's see, blah, 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 we have 1, 1, negative 3, 4, minus j. If we pull out the, the row in the column, we're left with 1, 1, 2, 4. Sorry, 1, 1, 2, 4, plus k. What are we left with k? 1, 1, 2, negative 3. 1, 1, 2, negative 2, negative 3. And then let's figure this out. We're going to do, and then we're going to do the other method. So let's see. We have four minus negative three, seven i minus j. Let's see. Four minus two is two, plus the k times. Let's see. Negative three minus two minus five k. Final answer: seven i minus two j minus five k. Cool. Um, let's go. Let's see. In this case, now we have. Let's see, I, J, K, 1, 1, 1, 2, negative 3, 4, but we have I, 1, 2, J, 1, negative 3. And let's figure this out. We can pick up the pace a little bit. Um, let's use, I'm going to use, I'm going to slowly use my color. So let's see, we have, we have 4, I, we have 2, J, and we have minus 3k minus, minus, let's see, 4j minus 3i plus 2k. And we put it together with my black pen. Let's see what happens here. Let's see, 4i minus negative 3i gives me my 7i. Nice. 2j minus 4j gives me my minus 2j, nice. Negative 3 minus 2 gives me my 5k. One, either method, it's totally fine. You'll get full credit. They'll be like, wow, you know, I'm going to do this. It's totally fine. If it's part 2, it goes in the calculator. If it's part 1, you do this by hand. So, uh, yeah, a couple of things. Now let's get to a little theory work. A little theory work. Let's see, some theory. Um, so once again, A cross, so the first thing, A cross B is perpendicular to A, and A cross B is perpendicular to B. That was the original thing. It's kind of cool, you have to remember that. Uh, number two, a vector cross by itself is equal to zero. And you can kind of see that because, you know, for example, let's do I, J, K, Let's say something really super simple. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, like, you know, I don't know, 3, 5, 8, 3, 5, 8. Well, some of you might say, can I manipulate these 
trying to manipulate these. Um, and the answer is, yeah. And so you could technically manipulate this to be IJK 000358. And then you say, hey, Mr. Adler, all these determinants, like if you take out the I, it's like zero times zero. If you take out the J, it's zero times zero. And then if you take out the K, it's like zero and zero. So this ends up, the determinant ends up equaling zero. So when you cross a vector with itself or some multiple of itself, we get zero. We don't get anything. So we're not interested. That's why I preface the whole unit by saying we have two different vectors. That's our interest. Um, what else are we interested in? Um, let's take a look at, sorry, a number three. Um, a cross B versus B cross A. So you might say, oh, it's, it's everything else was commutative, Mr. Adler. So I guess this is going to be commutative. The answer is, let's check that out. Let's do it a quick example and see what we get. The one example we do is going to be correct for all of them. So how do we do like, um, like I, J, K, one, two, three, four, five, six, versus I, J, K, four, five, six, one, two, three. And so, um, you know, we can quickly, yeah, let me move my chair up. We can quickly run through this. So we know this is 12 minus 15, negative 3i. Pull out the j's. 6 minus 12 minus 6j. I don't know, because it's minus the j, so it's so it's plus 6, and then we put the k, so it's, uh, we pull the k, it's 5 minus, 5 minus 3, so it's minus 3k. What's going on over here? Well, you might say well, it's a little different because if I pull out the i, it's now, if I pull out the i, it's now 15 minus 12, or 3i, not a coincidence. Um, if I pull out, sorry, I can't tell what's reflecting on the, on the board. If I take out the j, I have 12 minus 6, or minus 6j, right, because it's minus the j plus the k, and then if I take out the k row column, I have 8 minus 5, or plus 3k. So we have an interesting example here of something that we're doing in math that does not, uh, you know, follow the commutative rules. Everything is not commutative, or every, everything doesn't work. So we say that a cross b is equal to negative b cross a. And we can see these are opposite vectors. It's kind of interesting. Um, what I want you to do is, and especially to kids you're taking physics, I want you to look at something called the right-hand rule. The right-hand rule. And that's on page 425. And the idea is that you have your right hand, and if you're going from like, like if you're going, like if this is like x and this is y, like, yeah, then, then the, the, uh, the result measure goes up. But if you turn your hand upside down, and you, this is the x and this is y, the result goes the opposite way. It's kind of interesting. You need this for physics. So let's continue. Um, what else? What are the little things do you need to know? Um, I'm not sure if this is going to show up, but it has shown up in old problems. These are more like manipulating stuff. And we'll go over it in class. A um, couple of things, let's say. Let me get my red black pen. Um, let's see, what else do we need to know? Da -da -da, da -da -da. Uh, little things. Um, if you cross uh, the sum, that's equal to crossing it with the individuals and then adding it together. That works, that's, that's, that's the distributed property. Um, and then there's some exercise in the book, if you want to do it, I'm, I would recommend it, that kind of should manipulate this. So, and it brings all these together. Um, number, let's see, the next thing, this is kind of interesting. It turns out that the magnitude of the cross product is equal to the product of the 
magnitude times the sine of the angle. This is the angle between A and B. Now, you're probably going to be told all this. You don't have to figure this out. This is, and you get this formula. This is another relationship. I'm not deriving it. Once again, we saw, because remember, we saw, um, you know, these, the, like the magnitude here versus the individual magnitude. So the question is, what is, we have a new direction. We know it's perpendicular, but exactly what is its length? Well, this is the relationship. First, find the angle between A and B. That the sine of that angle times the product of its magnitude will be the magnitude of the cross product. Okay, um, and then just a little thing, if A is perpendicular to B, that means that theta is 90, when we know the sine of 90 is 1, therefore the magnitude of the the um, cross product is equal to the product of the individual magnitudes. That makes sense. Are you gonna ask to derive it? No, that's not gonna happen. Last thing, last thing, you might get a pro you're gonna get a problem in the book and they're gonna give you three points. They're gonna say A, B, and C lie on a plane. And they're gonna ask you to find a vector perpendicular to the plane. Okay, what you're going to do is, what you're going to do is first, you're going to find vector AB, and then you're going to find vector AC, and then you're going to cross those vectors. And that's going to give you your answer. And so, yeah, that's how you're going to do it. And so, you, I mean, you could do B, A, B, C, it doesn't matter, but it's easier to do A, B, and then A, C, and then you're going to cross them. So if you think about it, here's, a, here's your plane, here's A, B, and C. You're going to find A, B, you're going to find A, C, and then the cross product is going to be perpendicular. This is the cross product. And that's it for this year. And uh, remind me next year to show you how to use all these matrix stuff to solve all those Gaussian elimination problems. Okay, excellent.